Hello, welcome to lesson seven of Mastering Java. Here we're going to learn about the switch statement in Java. And that's just a quick way to do comparisons and drive your program flow. The, the thing to keep in mind with the switch statement is that everything you can do with the switch statement can also be accomplished by other uh, avenues in Java, such as if statements. So, you know, you're gonna come across that a lot. You're gonna learn about a lot of different program control uh, structures in Java but there's a lot of overlap between them and which one you pick really just depends on uh, you know uh, your specific application and what you're more comfortable with and so on so here we're going to learn about switch and you'll see how it can in many cases be useful let's say uh, you're getting a grade in a class and that grade could be a b c or d so we'll call it grade and let's initialize the grade to be an a all right that's a pretty good grade so we've done some something like this uh, in similar examples in previous lessons, um, but let's go ahead and print some messages out on the screen, dependent upon what you know what grade that I've actually have. Notice when I define the variable grade, I define it as a character variable, and so when I'm assigning the value to it, I put it in single quotes here. That's what we do when we deal with character variables. So obviously the possibilities for grades are A, B, C, D, and F. Uh, and, and so we want to print something out special for each one of those cases. And that's why we use the switch statement as an easy way to do that. So the way to handle that is you could say switch and you put in parentheses the variable that you're actually testing. So in this case, we're checking all the possibility of what the variable grade can be. So we're saying, hey, switch, uh, switch the variable grade here. And then you need to open a curly brace and hit enter, which puts a closing curly brace here. Now everything inside of these two curly braces, this one and this one, comprises what we call the switch statement here. Now, when we talk about switch, we really are comparing the variable that we list here against different possibilities. So we know A, B, C, and D are all possibilities. So we'll have different cases. And that's where we use the keyword case. Uh, so you say case, uh, and then you just put put it in there for instance in a single quote since we're talking with a character uh, case a you put a colon like this and then underneath it you type in what um, what should happen in the case of grade a is one that was selected so in this case we'll put system dot out dot print ln like this and then we'll say you made an a excellent job okay so that's what's gonna happen if the grade is a now we can go under here and you need to put the keyword break and I'll explain what that means in a minute you put a semicolon after it. I'll come right back to break in just a second. Let's look at a different case. So we back up the indentation, we do case, what is another possibility? Case B. So you put a colon there and then we're telling Java, okay for case A, if the grade is equal to the character A, print this out and then break out of the switch statement and continue execution. Now we're going to look at case B. So we'll do system.out.println like this, and then we'll say you made a B. Good job. So that's pretty good, all right? And again, underneath that, you need a break statement that tells Java once case B is located, and if it, if it agrees with that, we execute what's in here, and then we break out of the switch statement. I'll explain a little bit more about that a little bit later. We'll do case... C, which is also in the single quotes, and then we'll do system.out.println, and then we'll say you made a C. You did okay. That's just okay, it's average. And then we can just keep going down here, case D. Actually, one thing we need to add here is a break statement. And then we can also make this a little easier to read here by putting spaces, blank, blank lines or something underneath this guy. We can kind of make that a little bit easier to read. Under case D, we will put a colon, and then we have system dot out dot print ln. You made a D. You did poorly. All right, so let me kind of stop for a second. We'll put the break statement here. And let's discuss what we have so far. Um, what's basically going on here is we've created a switch block, a switch statement with a block. We have an opening curly brace. Here's the corresponding closing brace. So everything inside of it, all of these case statements, really make up what we call the switch. And you can make this a little easier to read, by the way, if you want to. You can leave it like this or you can indent these things in. 
Sometimes you see code written with all the cases actually indented in. Java doesn't really care what the spacing looks like on the screen. It's all the same to it, but sometimes it's a little easier to read. So inside of the switch, you're comparing uh, the variable grade against various possibilities. Um, now this is a character variable, so the possibilities are all going to be different characters. If the grade is an A, then we're going to print this out, and then we hit the break statement, and that breaks you out of the, the switch block completely. That means that we break out of here and we continue execution after this switch block is over with. In other words, this is almost like a menu. You know when you're in a main menu, you know in old old time computers where you have to hit you know, number one or number two or number three, or maybe a telephone menu where you're typing something into the phone into the menu system? Well, Basically, there's a case statement running back there, and whenever you type one of them into the menu on the phone, then you execute that, and then when you're done, the phone call ends, right? Well, the same thing sort of happens here. You execute one of these things, and only one of them, and whenever you finish executing in here, the break statement punches you out of the switch completely, and then you continue on in the program. All right, so we have case A, case B, case C, case D. Those are all of the main cases here, but there's one more I could put case F, I could put case F, um, and in fact I will just to show you case F, and then I could put system.out.println, and then I could say you made an F, you failed. All right, so there's a few things I want to show you here. Let's run it first of all. It says, you made an A, excellent job. This is all driven on what I have uh, chosen for my grade here. If I put a B down here, you made a B, good job. If I put a C, then of course, uh, you made a C, you did okay. If I do a D, you did D, you did poorly. And if I change it to F, then you made an F, you failed. Now notice that we're doing an exact comparison. So if I put a lowercase F here, it's a different character, so nothing happens. In other words, it looks to see if it matches this, 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 or this, none of them match since this is a lowercase f, so we just skip over all this stuff and the program ends. All right. The other thing I want to point out to you is um, we have here case f, right? But what if the user accidentally types in something else? I mean, they should type a, b, c, d, or f, but what if they accidentally type h? Well, that's not even valid. So you can have in the switch statement, you can have a default. Uh, a default guy here. This is almost like the else statement. Um, here we can say system.out.println. We can say you made a val an invalid entry. One thing we need to add before we move on is a break statement here, and then we don't need anything at the end over here. So let's go ahead and uh, enter this guy. Uh, we're running it. We still have a grade of F, so we still trigger this guy here. But let's say we enter something crazy in, like uh, T, a grade of T. So we hit this guy, and it says you made an invalid entry because we compare against A, B, C, D, and F. None of those trigger. Well, if none of them trigger, then it gets to the default statement, and that one's going to trigger uh, no matter what. So typically when you're doing the switch statement, you want to have a break after each and every uh, one of these uh, statements and then you have the one at the very end that's almost like the else clause that catches everything else. Now if any of these cases are triggered before that then the break statement pops you out of the switch completely. You bypass everything but if you don't uh, get to any of these cases if none of them trigger then you trigger the default which in this case is just telling you that you made an invalid entry. All right, so that pretty much covers the basics of, of the switch statement with the case uh, classifications. I want to show you uh, that this doesn't just apply to letters here. So let me go and delete all of this stuff. We still have our switch, we still have all of this, so let's change this up a little bit and let's say we have an integer, so you can do a switch statement with integers, uh, integer number of siblings. Number of siblings. And let's uh, start it off and just say that for the sake of argument here it's number one. Now we want to do a switch on the number of siblings, so num siblings, like this. All right, so in other words, I may ask you, uh, or take keyboard input, to ask you how many siblings you have, how many brothers and sisters. In this case, I'm not taking keyboard input, I'm just assigning it as a variable, but you might imagine where I ask the user to type that value in. So here we know that they can enter zero, they can enter one, two, three, four, five, I mean, 
technically people could have eight or nine siblings, but once you get up into 10 or 11, 12 siblings, it's very unlikely that you're going to get uh, have anyone that has that many brothers and sisters. But in any case, we could do a case statement on the number of siblings. So just like we're done, we've done before, we're testing this variable here, and then we do case zero, system.out.println, and then we could say you have uh, zero siblings, right? And then of course we want to have our break statement there. Then we could have case one, and then we could have system.out.println. You have one sibling, and so on. I think you can see how this goes. We don't need to continue on forever. What I want to do though is take this whole case, case number one, including the break. I'll copy it, Control C. I'll come back here and I'll paste it down. I'll change this to a case two, and then we'll have two. And I'll do it one more time, case three, and then you have three. And follow me on here, I'll just do one, one more time. I lied, we'll do one more time. Case four, four, and then let's give a default here. Default, system.out.println, you have too many siblings to count. In other words, if they have uh, more than four, right, in this case, then we're just, our program's not gonna handle it, let's just say. I could keep this going until they get to 10 siblings, but the point is not how many siblings they have, the point is to show you how it works. It behaves exactly the same. We have a variable with the number of siblings. If there's zero, it just tells you you have zero, and it breaks out, which means the switch is exited completely. And then you can have one, two, three, or four. I'm just showing you that it works with integers as well as it does with characters. So if we save this and run it, it'll tell me you have one sibling. I could change this to zero, and it tells me I have zero siblings. I can change this to four. We did our, uh, we did our uh, all the way up to number four here. And then of course, if I do something crazy like seven, and I run it, you have too many siblings to count. So the point is the switch statement is is a way for you to take a variable and compare it against uh, for equality against lots of different cases and that's why they're called case statements here. They're either going to be comparing against numbers or characters um, typically is what you're going to be using. You could use this to drive a menu system. You could have a menu on the screen and it would say press 1 for help press two to run, you know, to run the program, press three to do something. You can have a menu system driven by case statements where everything in here is what your program is executing whenever that menu entry is entered. Uh, but keep in mind, everything you can do with switch, you can also do with if and else if statements. It's just gonna look a little different and some people like to look at the way the switch is laid out and it's a little bit easier to read. It is more concise, especially if you have easy to identify paths through your code like this with zero, one, and two, and so on. The one thing that you need to remember though is with switch, you're comparing for equality. You're checking to see if this is equal to zero, if this is equal to one, and equal to two, and so on. You're not comparing less than, greater than, and all that. So in many ways, the if statements are much, much more powerful because you can compare for equality and you can also compare for greater than, less than. But in any case, it's something you'll need to know, something you'll run into for sure. What I'd like you to do now is go work the exercise that we've set up for you to give you some practice with the switch statement in Java. And I think as you work with it, you'll find that it's versatile and it's very easy to use.